Sing to me now, you muses who hold the halls of Olympus. You are goddesses. You are everywhere. You know all things. All we hear is the distant ring of glory. We know nothing. Who are the captains of Achaea? Who are the kings? The mass of troops I could never tally, never name, not even if I had ten tongues and ten mouths, a tireless voice, and the heart inside me bronze. Never, unless you muses of Olympus, daughters of Zeus, whose shield is rolling thunder, sing, sing in memory of all who gathered under Troy. Now I can tell the lords of the ships, the ships in all their numbers. First came the Boeotian units, led by Letus and Penelios, Arcesilus and Prothoenor, and Clonius shared command of the armed men who lived in Hyria, Rocky Aulis, Sconus, Scolus, and Etionus spurred with hills, Thespia and Greia, and dancing rings of Mycalysis, men who lived around Harma, Elesion, and Erythrae, and those who settled Elion, Hyle, and Pateon, Ocalea, Medeon's fortress walled and strong, Cope, Eutresius, and Thisbe thronged with doves, fighters from Coronea, Heliartus, deep in meadows, and the men who held Plataea and lived in Glissus, men who held the rough-hewn gates of lower Thebes, Onchestus, the holy, Poseidon's sun-filled grove, men from the town of Arne, green with vineyards, Medea and sacred Nyssa, Anthedon on the marches. Fifty ships came freighted with these contingents, one hundred and twenty young Boeotians manning each. The men who lived in Asblidon, Orchmenos of the Minions, fighters led by Ascalaphus and Ialmenus, sons of Ares, whom Astyoki bore in actor son in Isaias' halls, when the shy young girl, climbing into the upper rooms, made love with the god of war in secret, shared his strength. In her two sons' command sailed thirty long curved ships. Then Scedius and Epistrophus led the men of Phocus, two sons of Iphitus, that great heart, Nabolius' son, the men who held Cyparissus and Pytho's high crags, the hollowed earth of Chrysa, Daulus, and Panopius, men who lived along the Sisyphus's glinting waters, men who held Lilea close to the river's wellsprings, laden with all their ranks came forty long black ships, and Phocian captains ranged them column by column, manning stations along the Boeotians' left flank. Next, the Locrians led by racing Ajax, son of Oileus. Little Ajax, a far cry from the size of Telamonian Ajax, a smaller man, but trim in his skin-tight linen corslet, he outthrew all Hellenes, all Achaeans with his spear. He led the men who lived in Opos, Sinus, Caliaras, Bessa, and Scarfe, the delightful town of Agae, Tarfe, and Thronion down the Bagreus River. In Oilean Ajax charge came forty long black ships, Locrians living across the straits from Sancrosanct Eubea. And the men who held Eubea, Abantes breathing fury, Calchas and Eretria, Histaea, covered with vineyards, Cerinthus along the shore and Dion's hilltop streets, the men who held Charistus and men who settled Styra. Elephenor, comrade of Ares, led the whole contingent. Cacodon's son, the lord of the fierce Abantes, the sprinting Abantes followed hard at his heels, their forelocks cropped, hair grown long at the back, troops nerved to lunge with their tough ashen spears and slash the enemy's breastplates round their chests. In Elephenor's command sailed forty long black ships. Next, the men who held the strong-built city of Athens, realm of high-hearted Erechtheus. Zeus's daughter Athena tended him once the grain-giving fields had borne him, long ago, and then she settled the king in Athens, in her own rich shrine, where sons of Athens worship him with bulls and goats as the years wheel round in season. Athenians all, and Pateos' son Menistheus led them on. And no one born on the earth could match that man in arraying teams of horse and shielding fighters. Nestor, his only rival, thanks to Nestor's age, and in his command sailed fifty long black ships. Out of Salamis, great Telamonian Ajax led twelve ships, drawn up where Athenian forces formed their line of battle. Then men of Argos and Tyrans, with their tremendous walls, and Hermione and Asine commanding the deep wide gulf, Troezen, 
Aeone and Epidaurus, green with vines and Achaea's warrior sons who held Aegina and Masses. Diomedes, lord of the ward cry, led their crack contingents flanked by Sithenelus, far-famed Capenius' favorite son. Third in the vanguard marched Euryalus, strong as a god, son of King Mechistius, son of Talos. But over them all, with cries to martial men, Diomedes led the whole force, and his Argives sailed in eighty long black ships. Next, the men who held Mycenae's huge walled citadel, Corinth, and all her wealth, and sturdy, strong Cleone, men of Ornie, lovely Erythyria, and Sicyon, Adrasus' domain before he ruled Mycenae, men of Hyperesia, Gonoesa, perched on hills, men who held Pelini and those who circled Aegeon, men of the coastal strip and Helice's broad headland. They came in a hundred ships, and Agamemnon led them on, Atreus' royal son, and marching in his companies came the most and bravest fighting men by far. And there in the midst, armed in gleaming bronze, in all his glory he towered high over all his fighters. He was the greatest warlord. He led by far the largest army. Next, those who held Lacedaemon's hollows deep with gorges, Tharis, Sparta, and Messi, crowded haunt of the wild doves, men who lived in Brysiae, and Augae's gracious country, men who held Amicle, Helos the seaboard fortress, men who settled Laas and lived near Otylus. Agamemnon's brother, Menelaus, lord of the war cry, led their sixty ships, armed them apart down shore, and amidst their ranks he marched, ablaze with valor, priming men for attack, and his own heart blazed the most to avenge the groans and shocks of war they'd borne for Helen. Next, the men who lived in Pylos and handsome Arene, Thryon, the Alpheus Ford, and finely masoned Iepi, men who lived in Kyperesius and Amphigenia, Patelios, Helos, and Dorian, where the muses met the Thracian Thamyris, stopped the minstrel's song. From Ocalia he came, from Ocalia's king Eurytus, boasting to high heaven that he could outsing the very muses. The daughters of Zeus, whose shield resounds with thunder, they were enraged, they maimed him, they ripped away his voice, the rousing immortal wonder of his song, and wiped all arts of harping from his mind. Nestor. The noble old horseman led those troops in ninety sweeping ships lined up along the shore. And those who held Arcadia under Silene's peak near Ipetius' tomb, where men fight hand to hand, men who lived in Phineos and Archmenos rife with sheep, Stratia, Ripe, and Inispe, whipped by the sudden winds, men who settled Tegea, Mantinea's inviting country, men who held Stymphalus, men who ruled Parhasia. The son of Ancaeus led them powerful Agapenor, with sixty ships in all, and aboard each vessel crowded full Arcadian companies skilled in war. Agamemnon himself, the lord of men, had given them those well-bent ships to plow the wine-dark sea, since the works of the sea meant nothing to those landsmen. Then the men who lived in Buprasia, brilliant Elis, all the realm as far as Hyrmini and Myrcenus, frontier towns and Olenian rock, and Elysian bound within their borders. Four warlords led their ranks, ten ship flotillas each, and filling the decks came bands of Apeian fighters, two companies under Thalpius and Ephimachus, sons of the line of Actor, one of Eurydice, one of Cateatus. Strong Diores, the son of Amarinesius, led the third, and the princely Polynixus led the fourth, the son of King Agesthenes, Augeus's noble stock. Then ocean men from Dulichion and the Holy Islands, the Echinades, rising over the sea across from Elis, Meges, a match for Ares, led their troops to war, a son of the rider Phileus, dear to Zeus, who once, enraged at his father, fled and settled Deucalion. In his son's command sailed forty long black ships. Next, Odysseus led his Cephalenian companies, gallant-hearted fighters, the island men of Ithaca, of Mount Neriton's leafy ridges shimmering in the wind, 
and men who lived in Crocalia and rugged Agalips, men who held Zacynthus, and men who dwelled near Samos, and mainland men who grazed their flocks across the channel. That mastermind like Zeus Odysseus led those fighters on, in his command sailed twelve ships, prows flashing crimson. And Thoas, son of Andraemon, led Aetolia's units, soldiers who lived in Pleuron, Pylene, and Olenis, Calchas along the shore, and Calydon's rocky heights where the sons of well-born Oenus were no more, and the king himself was dead, and Meleager with his golden hair was gone. So the rule of all Aetolian men had passed to Thoas, and Thoas's command sailed forty long black ships. And the great spearman Idomeneus led his Cretans, the men who held Knossos and Gordian ringed in walls, Lyktos, Miletus, Lycastus' bright chalk bluffs, Phaestos, and Rhydion, cities a joy to live in, the men who peopled Crete a hundred cities strong. The renowned spearman Idomeneus led them all in force with Meriones, who butchered men like the god of war himself, and in their command sailed eighty long black ships. And Heracles' son, Tlepolemus, tall and staunch, led nine ships of the proud Rhodians out of Rhodes, the men who lived on Rhodes in three island divisions, Lindos and Ialesis, and Camarus's white escarpment, armies led by the famous spearman Tlepolemus, whom Estiochea bore to Heracles, filled with power. He swept her up from Ephyra, from the Celius's river, after he'd ravaged many towns of brave young warlords bred by the gods. But soon as his son Tlepolemus came of age in Heracles' well-built palace walls, the youngster abruptly killed his father's uncle, the good soldier Lysimnius, already up in years. And quickly fitting ships gathered partisans, he fled across the sea with threats of the sons and the sons' sons of Heracles breaking at his back. But he reached Rome at last, a wanderer rocked by storms, and there they settled in three divisions, all by tribes, loved by Zeus himself, king of gods and mortals, showering wondrous gold on all their heads. Nereus led his three trim ships from Syme, Nereus the son of Aglaea and King Carapus, Nereus the handsomest man who ever came to Troy, of all the Achaeans after Peleus' fearless son, but he was a lightweight trailed by a tiny band. And men who held Nisiris, Cassus and Carpathus, Kos, Eurypylus' town, and the islands called Calidne, combat troops, and Antiphus and Phidippus led them on, the two sons of the warlord Thessalus, Heracles' son. In their command sailed thirty long curved ships, 